one here. All right. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good evening. Depending on where you're you are joining us or listening to us from, you know, welcome to um, Africa Online Media Corporation. I believe today is uh, the last Sunday of the month of uh, September. I believe I may be wrong, but I think it's the last Sunday. I see. Uh, let me. I meet some people here and. The route, you are very welcome. Uh, Dr. Crossling is connecting. I, I am really honored about today, but before we go into the subject, I want to say our main anchor um, is bereaved. So our prayers and thoughts go out to Nia Song, who just lost his beloved sister just a couple of hours ago. So he will not be here. Uh, Nia Song, we are praying for you and your family. You know, um, it is well, I know you're a strong guy, you know, um, we'll call you after the program. And Dr. Crosley, you are warmly welcome. So today we are talking about uh, suicide, um, the causes of suicide, the symptoms, prevention and treatment with uh, the best in the business, our in-house uh, clinical psychologist, Dr. Uh, Nicholas Ngo Santo. And um, today is going to be an amazing day because our brother is going to do a lot of lecture and then, but we're going to have time to ask questions also. Dr. Santos, I have given you uh, host privileges in case you want to share anything, but um, I want you to take a minute, introduce yourself to those who are going to be watching you for the first time. You know, I want you to take a minute and introduce yourself to them. And then um, we would um, we'll let you go right into the uh, suicide issue. This month is suicide prevention, I believe. So Dr. Santos, the mic is yours. Uh, good afternoon or good evening, depending on the part of the world you're joining viewers. Uh, good evening, uh, the anchors and uh, a co host of uh, African Online. Uh, I am not a new face in the house. But I'll always take over this this uh, introduction because, as Reverend Pam said, because some people are joining for the first time. So I'm Dr. Nicholas Gusanto, uh, in fact, honorable because I was honored with a President Biden Lifetime Achievement Award last year, and uh, I have a doctorate in clinical psychology, a master's in counseling psychology, and a bachelor's in history and political science. I am a therapist, a psychotherapist. And I also work for the Department of Health in West Virginia and uh, as Child Protective Service Evaluator. And also, I teach at Walden University as a preceptor, uh, which earned me also an honorary instructor award. Uh, I teach uh, psychotherapy and group counseling for master's degree nurse practitioners. And I operate a mental health uh, facility in West Virginia. So uh, I have been in this business for a very long time. And so I am no new name in the house, African Online. Thank you. All right, um, Dr. Santos, uh, thank you so much. Uh, so Sister, Sister Ruth, I would let Dr. Santos uh, uh, go right into this suicide um, causes, symptoms, prevention and treatment, and then we we'll take questions from you and Dr. Crossling and anybody else that comes on. I think Ambassador Lisa is also out today. Is that okay, Sister Ruth and Dr. Cross? Okay. So Dr. Santos, the mic is yours. Go ahead. You know the topic, suicide. Yeah. Um, uh, go ahead. Uh, good evening, everybody who is joining. Um, I'm happy, I'm glad that uh, the anchors of Africa Media Corporation, especially the Rump um, accepted that we should uh, treat it in this format this way whereby I run through my explanation using my notes at times, then we can come in with some questions and round it up. So it will be more of a lecture format. Like uh, when you talk about suicide, suicide is a major public health concern. In 2020, suicide was the 12th leading cause of death overall in the United States, claiming the lives of over 49,000 uh, 45,900 people. These are, these are records and data from the National Institute of Health. So those are the sources. Uh, so suicide is complicated and tragic 
but it is often preventable. Knowing the warning signs for suicide and how to get help can save lives. So now what is suicide? Suicide is basically taking away of one's life by himself. Suicide is when people harm themselves with goal of ending their life and they die as a result. Suicide, there's a difference between suicide attempt, suicide thought, and suicide itself. And what are these differences? A suicide attempt is when uh, people or someone harm themselves with the goal of ending their life, but they do, but they do not die. So an attempt is where you do not die. And then suicide thought is when you have the thinking or you are feeling the thinking and the feeling of killing yourself, but you have not yet attempted and you have not yet killed yourself. So the difference is all this lies in, you may have an attempt and you may have a thought, but you have not really tested or practiced it. That means there is the lack of a lethality plan. A lethality plan is when you have already made arrangements on how it will happen and when it will happen and you are on the road to do, make it happen. So the lethality plan in combination with attempt and thought leads to death. But an attempt may not necessarily lead to death or a thought may not necessarily lead to death because you have not yet attempted and you have not killed yourself. So there are many warning signs that you see in people or you will hear or see in people who are at risk. So we are talking here about the risk factors. If you wanted, if you talk, someone is talking much about life being worthless, uh, therefore that person is suicidal or talking about wanting to die or wanting to kill themselves. Those people are at risk, are, are the population that stands a higher risk of committing suicide or talking about feeling empty or hopeless or having no reason to leave, talking about feeling trapped or feeling that there are no solutions, feeling un unbearable emotional or physical pain, talking about being a burden to others, withdrawal, withdrawal from the community, friends, close ones and neighbors. Those are people who are at high risk of killing themselves. Or if you see some people who are giving out their important possessions, saying goodbye to friends and family for just no cause, putting affairs in order, such as making a will. Although we make wills, yes, wills are necessary. Not necessarily that anybody, everybody or anybody who makes a will has a suicidal thought or ideation or is attempting to commit suicide. But the fact is that if you see young persons or people at middle age making wills and all those, know that we need to go closer to ask more the reason for that, because they may be, this may be red flags. So, or some will take very great risk, like running, driving at excessive speed, drinking alcohol excessively, which is not very usual with them, uh, have just resorted to that. They display extreme mood swings, so that's changing from sad to very calm and happy. So these mood swings may be indicative of being depressed and frustrated uh, because, uh, you know, not everyone have that have, has got that em emotional resilience to cope with distress or life uh, hardship. So they easily get frustrated and the end result may be a manifestation of mood swings. They are happy today, they are sad tomorrow, they are calm, they don't talk anymore, they withdraw themselves, all these things have to be looked into us. Some of that, the, the group of people who may stand a high possibility of being suicidal. Uh, some talk about feeling guilty or feeling great or, feel, or having guilt or shame after something they have done, which they think it's unbearable. Uh, you see this issue of bullying, bullying in our schools, colleges, or maybe some certain traditions that ostracize people for certain bad acts. Some are excommunicated from villages and from towns and cities because of certain things. They may feel so ashamed and they want to take, end their life. Uh, some act very anxious or agitated. 
changing eating habits or sleeping habits, showing rage, showing rage or talking about seeking revenge. It is important to note that suicide is not a normal response to stress. Suicide thought or actions are signs of extreme distress and should not be ignored. If these warning signs ap apply to you or someone you know, get help as soon as possible, particularly if the behavior is new or has increased recently. Now, having known or understood uh, the definition of suicide, the distinction between, between societal attempt, thought, and suicide itself, and the red flags that portray themselves as indicators for people who stand a high dispensation or possibility of, any, of killing themselves, let us now know how we can help, especially in the clinical setting or in our day-to-day -day setting, how can we dig deeper or what can we do to help some of these people or to identify? So the most important thing is to ask questions. You ask a most important question like, are you thinking about killing yourself? You must have discovered when you go to the hospital, when you go to the emergency, this question is always present, omnipresent in the course of diagnosis or in the course of clinical interviewing, you must ask that individual whether he or she has ever thought of killing himself or herself. This is a question that we just ask to know. So it's not an easy question, but studies show that asking at risk individuals if they are suicidal does not increase suicide or suicidal thoughts. So the question does not increase suicide or suicidal thoughts. Instead, it helps the clinicians to identify those who are or those who stand a high probability of killing themselves. We want to keep them safe, reducing a suicidal person's access to highly lethal items or places is an important part of suicide prevention. Why this is not easy always? Asking if that person at risk has a plan and removing or dis disabling the little, little means can make a difference. I talked, I spoke about the lethality. Lethality is having a plan, a little means, which means the person might have bought a gun, might have bought a cord by which he would tie his a noose around the neck, or must might have prepared by buying sharp objects like knives, or is planning to jump towards an oncoming train or driving the vehicle at excessive speed to a scratch, to a crash, or thinking about jumping from a high rise or drowning him, himself or herself. These are all little means. So we may limit things like those guns, those knives, uh, certain narcotics or medications that can be true overdosing, we can clean that environment of all those harmful objects and all those poisonous objects that may a way of minimizing, that, 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 uh, uh, that would be, that may serve as a means of reducing the possibility of that individual having a little, a, a little uh, a, a letter plan uh, or having the letter plan executed. So what we do is we always listen to them carefully, uh, ask those questions, and then also get rid of all those uh, things I've just listed, which can be closer to the individual. Then also we want to help them, connect them to crisis or cross crisis hotlines and suicide uh, lifelines the easiest one of which is dialing 988, 988 on your phone. When you dial 988, you'll be connected to the suicide crisis lifeline. And uh, the, the, the phone number uh, is 741-741. Uh, 741-741 or 988, when you dial it on your phone. You can also make connection with those individuals to therapists and professionals, nurse practitioners, uh, psychologists, therapists, medical doctors who can start talking to that individual. And why not other therapeutic sources of uh, churches and other people who 
are in the field of helping human the helping humans or, or patients in, in 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 uplifting their behaviors uh you have to encourage that individual to stay connected stay connected so staying in in touch after a crisis or being discharged from care can make a difference studies have shown the number of suicide deaths goes down when someone follows up with the at-risk person so um when we follow up with the at-risk person that's by connecting that person and being in touch asking these questions giving all these uh, resources these resources uh, may better up uh, that individual so we now understand that the major risk factors and the major causes are depression chronic pain uh, a history of suicide a history of suicide in the family uh, genetic predisposition uh, so we talk about suicide being hereditary uh, to some extent in some families uh, also uh, exposure to violence people who have been exposed to family families that are exposed to violence including including uh, victims of physical or sexual abuse uh, also uh, those who are uh, more suicidal so this is one of the causes also of suicide uh, the presence of guns or firearms at home may trigger suicide uh, exposure directly or indirectly to others with suicidal behavior you know like gangs gangs and groups uh, students uh, children or pupils who are connected to a gang may, may at time develop suicidal behaviors one may copy from another and so it goes on and on and on a stressful life events such as loss of job uh gambling loss of monies and property and wealth uh marriages relationship broken uh, can all trigger these are triggers can all trigger uh suicide and then when we come to examining uh the treatments or the treatment of suicide we look at universal screening it's often good for people to screen themselves for suicide and if you meet a psychologist or a therapist or a licensed clinical social worker we have tests we have psychometric tests that have been uh, validated for, and also reliable in testing for suicide yeah you have a scale even in the minnesota multifacetic uh, personality inventory we have the hopelessness scales that are used to assess people who are hopeless and frustrated at a level that picks up your level of depression analyzes it your level of trauma analyzes it and gives you a response on whether you are suicidal or you are not um uh, statistics have shown that certain therapies are more effective the therapies that are most effective for the treatment of suicide you have the cognitive behavioral therapy the cognitive behavioral therapy practi practically deals with the reversal of thoughts such harmful behaviors thinking or thought such thoughts will be redressed we have to remove the maladaptive thought belief pattern and replace it with healthy healthy thought patterns for example the therapist sits with you one on one to ask you questions dig deep into it try to redress your negative thinking and replaces it with positive thinking giving you homework assignments watching movies using techniques of meditation muscle relaxation deep breathing uh meditation yoga sports and other activities looking areas of void in your life and trying to work towards replacing them with healthy lifestyle and in that way alleviating the suicidal intent or the suicidal attempt or the suicidal thought or the suicidal feeling we can go to an extent of signing a contract with our patients sometimes we sign a suicide contract a suicide contract is just as simple a small piece of paper on which 
both of you append your signatures, whereby you, I tell my patient, before you kill yourself, or whenever you feel such urges, or such feelings, or such thoughts of attempting to kill yourself, will you promise to call me first? And will you allow me to be the last person to see you before you can kill yourself? So you know you are getting him now into a catch-22, a catch-22 whereby before that individual thinks about killing himself or herself or feels those urges coming, he will trust the therapist, he will call the therapist and they will talk. You, the therapist, know that whenever he will call you or she will call you, you'll be able to disarm him. You'll be able to use the language that you can use to make him wait for you. And when he waits for you, what happened? When you arrive there, should you see him with a gun? Therapist, most therapists are courageous. God bless them. Because therapists have disarmed, have taken guns away from patients. What about you think about having a coffee and uh, attempting to use the restroom? Whereas you have already contacted law and order, indicating where that firearm is for them to arrive and take the firearm. Some things like that can happen. You can distract the patient and take away the harmful object. You can take away the medication to go use for, you know, you can play him or her into getting away those things. Uh, the harmful objects, the knife, uh, the cord, and other things, other little things that were supposed to be used. We have to get rid of those things. Uh, so in the course of therapy, you work out those things. You work out those things. You take them, you take some of them, and you talk. The talking cure. The talking cure. So cognitive behavioral therapy is one. Dialectical behavioral therapy has, has been shown to reduce suicidal behavior in adolescents. This works for adolescents. DBT, which is dialectical behavioral, behavior therapy, has also been shown to reduce the rate of suicide in adults with borderline personality disorder, a mental illness characterized by an ongoing pattern of varying moods, self-image, and behavior that often results in impulsive actions and problems in relationships. A therapist trained in DBT can help a person recognize when their feelings or actions are disruptive or unhealthy and teach the person skills that can help them cope more effectively with upsetting situations. So DBT is just another form of cognitive behavioral therapy. What about uh, EMDR, eye movement desensitization and reprocessing? This is therapists are trained particularly to de-escalate trauma and deal with phobias or stimuli that um, keeps the individual persistently traumatized. So uh, these are specialists who are trained in carrying out those type of uh, exposure therapies for fear, fear reduction in patients, fright or fear of fright and um, um, depression, depression. And then we come to talk about um, a psychotic depression, which is typically amongst uh, schizophrenia patients. Schizophrenia patients, we call it psychosis, the presence of psychosis. And um, such persons who stand a high possibility of committing suicide that do pose with psychotic depression, which is, means there must be components of hallucination and delusion. When we talk of psychosis, we talk of the presence of hallucination and delusion. Hallucination is um, uh, deceitful or uh, deceptive thoughts. No, no. Uh, um, mm. Hallucination is, is listening to voices or hearing voices. That's hearing voices is uh, auditory hallucination. Uh, seeing those things that other people don't see is visual hallucination. And then, um, so we talk about the presence of um, uh, hallucination, uh, which can be auditory auditory or it can be visual. So that's when we talk about psychosis. And then depression, you know, depression is the mood, it goes with mood. 
major mood alterations. So in such cases, the FDA, which is the Food and Drug Administration, have indicated one particular medication that is very effective in those kind of patients. And that is clozapine. Clozapine. Clozapine is an antipsychotic medication used primarily to treat individuals with schizophrenia. To date, it is the only medication with specific US Food and Drug Administration indicating indication for reducing the risk of recurrent suicidal behavior in patients with schizophrenia or schizoaffective disorder. So, and then we, are, we have also uh, the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, the SSRIs, of which uh, not most of them are recommended because we are warned that there are some SSRIs that their, um, uh, their side effects can escalate mood swings. So we are warned to prescribe SSRIs with reservation unless specifically we have studied the side effects and see that it's going to help the individual. For example, bipolar patients and major depressive patients will not be advisable to uh, consume SSRIs because it just put them at another tunnel in the, in, in, the, in the middle lane of a bell way of confusion or, depressed, or depression. So it can add more to the mood swings and develop to something else. Uh, we always recommend that uh, those who use these uh, medications for anxiety and depression should be people whom we have ruled in them uh, not to be at risk and uh, uh, ruled to them, ruled and, and studied into it that the side effects are not going to escalate uh, the presenting situation. Yeah, so um, we always advise that people should report serious side effects of this medication to FDA. Uh, the reporting online by phone is 1-800-332-1088. I repeat 1-800-332-1088. If you consume any medication that you are going through mood swings, depressed or a psychotic depression or any kind, or you suicidal and then medication further escalates, or we say it further exacerbates the situation, you should report in order that they can tell you what to take uh, to help the situation. So in a nutshell, it takes a collaborative a collaborative team care to help in mental health and to help in de-escalating uh, suicide and under mental health presentations in a clinical setting. We work hand in hand in a clinical trial team. Uh, Evidence-based practice does allow that uh, we build up a team, a collaborative clinical team between the nurse practitioners, the medical doctors, the psychiatrist, the psychologist, and uh, the nurses, we, we work hand in hand, the clinical social worker, we work hand in hand uh, to alert when we find the presence of uh, a suicide in any of our patients. And we try to make sure that uh, uh, the at risk person be given maximum uh, clinical attention. Uh, without talking so much, I will uh, uh, conclude by saying that uh, there is also one item I missed which is the effectiveness of rational emotive behavioral therapy. Rational emotive behavioral therapy focuses on, uh, is another form of cognitive behavioral that deals primarily with changing the thought belief system, uh, the thinking and uh, whatsoever, but it is a cognitive behavioral therapy because it addresses your cognition, your thinking, your thoughts and replaces it the negative ones with the good ones. And more to that, there was the de a further development, development within the Christian realm or in the churches, whereby rational emotive therapy was expanded to become rational emotive Christian behavioral therapy. And in that, they proved, it was proven that there is a particular area that works very good for therapies who are focusing on treating patients with, with suicide ideation, thought or actual suicide patients. And this is uh, the principle of uh, the three 
ULAs, ULAs, the three UAs or ULAs. We call it universal life acceptance, universal self acceptance, and universal others acceptance, which means when you're treating a patient who is suicidal as a therapist, you must invoke the importance of life, the meaning of life, so that the person, the individual gets to understand that life is too good for me to kill myself. So the individual goes to understand that there's more meaning and emphasis in living a good life, an enjoyable life, rather than killing yourself. So if you stay alive, you're gonna enjoy the fruits of good life. And then the universal self, you focus on the importance of that individual self, how he himself is so important that he needs to keep the self and uplift the self. He has to know that his happiness depends on self. So the concept of self, the self concept is used to develop this treatment strategy of universal life acceptance for the individual to accept the importance of life and then to accept also the importance of others in his life or her life, which we talk about uh, the universal others acceptance. For example, you can take a picture of the wife or the brother or the sister or the children and say, these are the people who will stay behind to mourn for you, who cherish you, who worship you, and who care about you, rather than that small depression or that small element that makes you that's pushing you to do to take a stupid decision. Look at the people, the others that are important in your life that you're going to leave behind to suffer. So by just doing this and using these three approaches, have proven these three approaches being used of universal life acceptance, universal self acceptance, and universal others acceptance have proven to be a great work in the expansion of cognitive behavioral therapy, specifically rational emotive behavioral therapy in the treatment of suicide. It is on that note that I will round up this conversation and open the floor for questions. Thank you. Oh, awesome, 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 Dr. Santos. As usual, always ready to share, to serve, you know. So um, I wanna go to Sister Ruth. This is Sister Ruth's background. Sister Ruth, any question? I do have a question, but I'll go, uh, I'll wait for the others. Any questions or remarks or comments or what Dr. Uh, Santo has discussed? What I was wondering, one of my questions is, um, <clears throat> I know some people that are dealing with their children and suicide, and sometimes the child will, well, they're not a child anymore, they're an adult, but they'll say stuff like, well, I'm going to kill myself today and I don't love myself today. And some, sometimes it gets overwhelming for the, for the person that's dealing with that because you don't want your child to do that. But how do you balance not going there with them and, and you get all up, caught up in them saying these things and you don't want this to happen to your child, but they keep talking about it some, from time to time. That's, that's a very good question. Um, there is nothing which helps in, 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 in handling the issue rather than confronting the issue. Uh, there is nothing like, I will, give it a blind eye. I wouldn't talk about this because in my notes that I presented, I said the most important aspect is ask question. When you feel those things, those kind of statements that you just said, those are the red flags or those are the factors that are in indicators of a suicidal ideation. And so an idea it's not really necessarily an intent and it's not the actual act. Because here we're still dealing with the emergence of the thought. There is no lethality, no weapon has been bought, no overdose medication exists yet, it may not, no sharp objects have been bought, no court with which to 
to tie around the loose and, and hang it somewhere. So we are now still at the, the elementary age of or stage of you just say, hey, baby, what makes you to think about killing yourself? Ask questions. And when they do, you know, it goes back and forth and back and forth. And sometimes it feels like I just want this attention. I know when I say things like this, they're going to pay more attention to me. But like, there's none of that. There's no, um, there's no gun or knife or anything. We, we call that, we call that, you know, I feel mal malingering. You malinger or factitious. Yes. There are people who use mental health symptoms to call for attention. They do malinger mental illness. The only way you can distinguish between someone who is malingering or being factitious and reality is to refer that person to a therapist to distinguish. We have the Minnesota multifacetic, multifacetic personality inventory that got the malingering skills. So you can, you can carry out a simple test to know if the person is lying, is manipulating. If you're a parent, cannot figure it out, get an expert. Yeah, now, they, ha they have sought help and, you know, been into facilities and things like that. And then, okay, fine, six, seven months and all of a sudden, it's hard, it's hard for a parent because what if something does happen? And you just think, you know what? You've been saying this for so many years. I'm just, we've we've given you the help. We've we've affirmed have, you so many ways. Have you, if you if you find some a child saying that, and it's of school age, be it in uh, middle school or elementary, or in college, all campuses have school psychologists and social workers. I I go into campuses most of the time to talk with the school psychologists and social workers just to find out about the well-being of my kids. Yes, some teachers, special needs educators who have been trained today are also psychologists. They have been even if they are not psychologists, they have been trained in uh, adaptive behavior analysis, which means uh, it's more of a cause that is it's more of a therapeutic cause within the school system whereby they can teach students from diverse backgrounds, special needs, identify problem kids, low intelligence IQ, IQ kids. Um, they, they identify the IQs of the kids by score, scoring, by scoring them on the Weschler uh, preschool scale or Weschler school, uh, adult intelligence scale. They know now, that's how they come to know in which classes they have to put different kids. And they also look at problems and troubled kids. They look into things more than what the common man understands. They look even into hygiene. They look into meals, into diets. They, think, they talk about homes with domestic violence, children at risk, those of sexual abuse. These are things that are being evaluated in those classes. And if you find time to share your concern, if you're a parent and you have a kid who has these problems, and if you don't find time, this is this is a good uh, uh, call call for concern, or, or it's a good wake up call for especially some of us who are coming from different backgrounds that hardly hardly pay attention to what how our children are doing in school, how our children do their homework assignments. You need to find out. Sometimes just take a walk around the campus and say you want to see the social worker, you want to see the teacher, you want to have a conversation out of classroom, and they may point out to you what you have to do with those kind of behaviors how do you address it and how they can help to address them mr root you 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 satisfied with the response you're muted i was i was just saying thank you okay you're welcome. all right good job dr santos let's go to dr crossling any questions about what dr santos um uh, discuss about suicide, uh, uh, causes, uh, symptoms, prevention, and treatment? 
So thank you for the opportunity. Um, Dr. Santos, I had a girlfriend who could hear voices. I even heard the voice that, um, that she heard. Um, so she did uh, put a gun in her mouth and killed herself. Um, so it's really hard for me to frame this in a question. Um, so I'll frame it this way. In the future, is there any type of technology or treatment that can help people who are the most on, on a scale of one to ten, ten plus being that they will harm themselves. They there is something I heard there. You said uh, you had a girlfriend who died. Uh, she was hearing voices and that you you happen to have heard also the voice that she was hearing? Yes. Correct. I, I, because I heard it and I, I, I just, you know, thought it was just like um, me thinking it. And then she asked me, why did I say it to her? And I was like, I, that was not me speaking. I heard the same thing. That is, that is serious. I, I know. Was based, based on that, because let me tell you, to be sincere and honest, um, these are some of the trial questions that they give even students who are about to defend uh, in, in the, in the oral, comp oral comprehensive exam. Uh, a greatest test to you as a clinician is to have a test aspect inserted in a test. For example, we are talking about mental health here, and we are talking about uh, a suicide, and we are talking about uh, various aspects of, uh, of, of depression and mood swings. We are talking about bipolar, we're talking about schizoaffective disorder, uh, post-traumatic stress. We're talking about psychotic depression. Your scenario falls within psychosis, psychotic depression, which does have, and psychosis is uh, uh, hallucination and delusion. Delusion is a uh, uh, deceptive, deceptive um, world, deceptive world. You are living in a deceptive world, completely, a, a, a false world, which is not real. And hallucination is the hearing or seeing of things which are not there and other people don't see. But in this situation, you saw what she saw. You heard, you heard what she saw, which is auditory. Auditory means both of you had a, had a voice. So in this case, does it mean both of you are sick? That is the first question. Because if you heard this voice that she was hearing, it means this should not be classified mental health. It should be real. Because here we are talking of unreal. We are treating people who are seeing things unreal, hearing things unreal. But now you are confirming that she committed suicide and she heard something that caused it. And you also heard she died, but you did not die. Which means both of you do not have same emotional resilience. Most of you, both of you do not have same uh, uh, absorption, absorption, uh, shock, shock waves for such uh, uh, things. But it means that uh, the, the person was real and the voice was real. It means this is not really ordinary uh, mental health issue. Is more more to that, uh, yeah. But however, uh, in the course of uh, I don't know whether medical attention was sought out at the time before she died, whether she was on treatment, 
for those things, but the clinician or the doctor that was treating her should have said that if some other one heard what the patient heard, then it's not really just mental health. That's how I approach that issue. Dr. Crossley? Yes, ma'am. So, uh, so there was a, another young man who, uh, you know, also killed himself the same way, uh, putting a gun in his mouth um, uh, several days after I uh, had talked to him to try and encourage him. Um, so what I do now is whenever someone has suicide ideation or I don't try to diagnose them or whatever, I just simply tell them about the 988 number or tell them to seek out a minister at a church um, because I tell them there's nothing I can do. Thank you. Oh. Yeah, you, which means you basically do referrals for these cases. Um, doing referral is the best thing to do if the therapist thinks that there is something in his life or her life that will go will cut across treatment. And this we talk about transference, transference, transference and counter transference. Transparency, counter transparency is when the, the therapist uh, view and the therapist uh, on feelings and experience may lead to a conflict of interest in treatment. Uh, counter transference and transference issues are both client and uh, clinician, uh, in the sense that the client also may have a brother or sister who is a therapist and we seeking treatment to that bringing treatment from that individual so there's double relationship or dual relationship conflict of interest so in this situation because of your experience uh, with losing a friend a girlfriend who died as a result of both of you having had same voice uh, as a doctor you don't want to attend anymore to people who are uh, suicidal and you do referral to the churches. Okay, there are some other therapists who are specialists in uh, handling suicide and will want also to continue treating such patients. Um, some of us, for example, I am a, I am a multicultural therapist. Um, basically, Basically, my focus has been, and where I'm best efficient, is how to uh, how to modify um, uh, treatments, how to modify treatments and bring holistic treatment. I'm focused on holistic treatment of uh, uh, bringing some aspects of our African uh, treatment approaches into the Western treatment approaches. Um, really. I consider I focused on the area of uh, um, the challenges to assertive community treatment with patients of schizophrenia in Nigeria, which means there are traditional methods, traditional medical and spiritual methods that work for patients, for acute mental health patients, mm -hmm. not only Western therapies and medications. The trado herbal healing using of folklore, spiritual healing, and herbal healings being integrated into the uh, medical system. And uh, that's what happens in Aro, Aro, Nero, Aro, Aro Nero Psychiatric Hospital in Abiyakota in Nigeria, where I did part of my, my work. So here, um, Africans have been able to handle their cases of mental illness before now without Western medications. If the Africans have been able to handle it or some third world countries where, where they did not have the DSM, 
when he did not have the diagnostic statistic manual that classifies mental illness into different uh, subclasses. They have just been treating from their own uh, local remedies, a traditional uh, herbal, uh, prayers, uh, sacrifices to the gods and other things. Uh, the introduction of Western therapy of uh, psychotherapy and psychopharmacology medication management will be a booster, which means they can also try to use that and the West can also try to use their own approaches. Because if you heard a voice that your girlfriend died about, you heard the same voice. This is more something that has to do with spiritual. And that aspect of that aspect of my multiculturalism, just like holistic medicine. You remember when I was talking about therapies, here, I mentioned sports, yoga, other things that help to elevate mental health, dancing. So if we can look at it from that approach and that perspective, I think uh, clear, uh, pay, uh, doctors like you who will prefer to refer patients, if you have training in these other aspects, you will not refer those patients anymore, or you will know how to refer them to this kind of therapist who, are, who also address spiritual. I think that is the best response I can give to your question, uh, Dr. Grossley. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Crossley. Thank you, Dr. Santos. You know, uh, before we go to the to the top of the hour, we are almost there. During your, your lecture, you talked about having a contract with a patient yes. and uh, asking them to give the therapist the opportunity to be the last person they speak to before they commit suicide. Yes. That was a bit concerning to me. I, I can understand the idea that where well, contract uh, it has obligations, but to me, to tell somebody that I want to be the last person you talk to before you commit suicide, it, it could backfire. It could boomerang. The person may, <clears throat> may still commit the suicide after talking to you. I understand the intent. The intent is like, Okay, during that, their last speech, maybe the therapist could convince them not to commit suicide. However, <clears throat> somebody who is really <laughs> mentally challenged or delusional could, uh, could say, okay, well, um, I'm, I'm just gonna go talk to this person and then go ahead and carry out the suicide. So my thing is, how about tweaking that last statement to say, I would like to be the last person you talk to then you can decide, you can make a decision. Or instead of saying, I want to be the last person you talk to before you commit suicide. Okay. Uh, Reverend Pam, thank you for picking out that one. Mm -hmm. uh, really, um, what is in the contract is does not really carry those wordings of before you commit suicide. Awesome. Okay. What you did, that correction is correct. Maybe I was in a hurry to say it but put it in that way but the fact is that um you would just like to be the last person uh, that that person like to talk to if at all uh, those urges or those feelings or those thoughts or oh, they should give you an opportunity they should they should yeah, speak with you let me let me tell you reverend palm mm -hmm. anyway this is a catch 22 for therapists and uh, mm -hmm. we don't let it go so easily but let me tell you you are not going there alone that mm -hmm. person has a pistol. You are going there with, with law and order. Mm -hmm. You are not going there alone. So tricking, that's a trick. Mm -hmm. tricking. You are playing for time. Mm -hmm. You are playing for time to do a rescue mission. Mm -hmm. And if somebody has a pistol and say, at 12 o'clock, you call the therapist and say, I'm going to shoot myself in 25 minutes. You should be scared of your life, the therapist. You may go. Yeah, be yeah, because they may decide not to go alone. You may they may decide to take someone with them. If, if anyone who is suicidal is also homicidal. Mm -hmm. Anyone who is suicidal is also homicidal. They have, have nothing, nothing to lose. Yes. They have nothing to lose. So the issue is language is being used here just to is as a as deterrence. That's deterrence. Okay. We're just deterring. We're just playing for, for time to 
to mm-hmm. see what people are. Because I will tell you, therapists also are caught mm-hmm. in, 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 in a tight corner sometimes that they can lie. Mm-hmm. To get, if you can lie to save somebody's life, I will lie. Mm-hmm. Yes, if it comes to that level that I have to tell a lie to save somebody's life, I will make sure if my intent is to save your life, I will. If I'm able to keep confidentiality, mm-hmm. I'm not releasing you something that will lead you to take your life away. Mm-hmm. Or then I should be able to also save a lie by telling a lie. But after I would, you have must have recovered, I will tell you that I told a lie because I had to save your life. Mm-hmm. No, that, that's important. Or uh, be not being fought, fought right with them. But yes. I, I want to say this as a minister, because me, my phone is always on because we get phone calls. I'm also a chaplain, which I'm, I'm hoping Dr. Santos will become one soon, you Thank know, you. Uh, uh, because of the line of work you are in. But I've had a call from somebody who was about to commit suicide. Mm-hmm. You, you know, that's why my, I keep my phones on because people call for prayers at all, all kinds of hours, you know. The only time my phone is on mute is when I'm in church or like as here it's on mute, but I can see it's open. So if somebody's called out, I'll, I'll see, like I already took one call. But this is the thing, you know, I don't know if you guys incorporate prayers with me. Yes. Those people, I pray with them and I also encourage them and, and, and get them to focus on the good things in life, not the bad things. And let them know that as bad as you think your situation is, if you hear the situation of others, you will start praising God and start celebrating. You know, I, I, and I'm thankful to God that I've not had so many of those calls. There have been few. Reverend but, Bob, uh-huh. <laughs> I have. I went to school with a lot of Ghanaians and Nigerians. They mm-hmm. came, they were reading counseling as major, counseling. Mm-hmm. And I was doing psychology as major, doing the masters. So I asked them, why is it I'm, I'm the, one of the only blacks or Afri- black Africans who is doing psychology, all of you are in counseling. They said, no, because they are, they are, they are, they are doing pastoral counseling. Mm-hmm. So I proceeded to clinical mental health. They were already back in Nigeria and Ghana as renowned pastors. They only mm-hmm. came to the course. And um, one of the, th- during my doctorate uh, comprehensive exams and other things, one of the techniques I was taught as a therapist is to read the Bible. Mm-hmm. use some verses and stuff to incorporate into therapy mm-hmm. and if you're doing addiction therapy nothing has helped nothing has been most successful in the treatment of anxiety and alcoholic mm-hmm. alcoholism and drugs more than the 12 steps mm-hmm. and what at the beginning of the 12 steps the 12 steps got to do with the serenity prayer mm-hmm. it got to do with um um you have hit the bare way, you are at the end, at the end of the tunnel, and you have discovered that nothing works other than surrendering my life to Christ. Mm -hmm. And you are asking God that only a divine intervention can save Mm -hmm. you from this alcoholism or from this drug. Mm -hmm. Because the addiction is so much. It happens for anything that you are overdoing, for, for being eating, overweight, obesity, all those things, alcoholism, drug addiction, nothing has saved people's life more than church programs. That's why I mentioned during the course of my lecture, I talk about rational emotive Christian behavioral therapy. Mm-hmm. Christianity incorporated into our work, behavioral health. Yeah. Works, works like magic. Even I talk about aspects of depression, I talk about muscle relaxation, meditation. Mm-hmm. So, Thank you. We are on the same train. We no, we are, we are, my brother. We have to work together. So we are at the top of the hour. Let me go to the. <clears throat> let me go to our anthem, and then we're going to. Good job, Doctor Doctor Santos. Good job. Hold on. Thank this you. This is so important because a lot of children, even black people, now committing suicide. Never used to be that way. Even Africans, our children, never used to commit suicide, but now it's happening. You know, so. We have to keep talking about this, you know. Hold on a second. All right. <clears throat> oh, Africa. Can you guys hear the anthem? Oh, no. Yes. 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 Y
Africans, Africans for Africa. 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 Africans have many bright ideas. If only you let us share. If you really want to know my history, please come sit down, listen to my story. God gave us a wisdom. He guides our footsteps, makes us shine and transform. Hey, as one people with so many cultures, let it be the one. Stand up, Africans. Let's save Africa. Let us all unite behind Africa Online Media Corporation. Stand up, Africans. Let's save Africa. It's time to come together, promote awareness, progress, and solution. Hey, Africans, Africans for Africa. Africans, Africans for Africa. Africans, Africans for Africa. All Africans can rally for a common cause to believe without judgment in what our brother does. To identify and resolve our challenges. To allow each other's ideas without regard to standards as one people. With so many cultures, yes, it did be a one. Stand up, Africans, for Africa. Let us solve all the problems plaguing our continent. Stand up, Africans, let's save Africa. Africa Online Media Corporation, that's a good way to start. Stand up, Africans, let's save Africa. They have all the resources we need to benefit our society. Oh. For everyone, if we believe prosperity for Africans, if we believe medical facilitation for Africans, if we believe stand up, stand up, Africa is for Africa, Africa Online Media Corporation. That's a good way to start. Stand up, Africans. Let's save Africa. Africa is the cradle of civilization. The motherland. Stand up, Africans. For Africa. We were enslaved not because we were weak, but because of our hospitality. Stand up, Africans. Let's save Africa. Jump on the Africa Online Miracle Jet. Don't be left behind. Stand up, Africans. For Africa. Together we shall succeed. Together we will win. Stand up, Africans. Let's see Africa. We are writing our own story. The truth and we shall tell it to the world. Stand up, Africans. Africa, no more lies. Africans own us.
Africa. No more lies. Africans own Africa. That's our anthem written by yours truly and composed by our very own DJ Skipper. Well, you know, we've been announcing about Operation Boho 55. You know, Sister Ruth, thank you for your recent donation. We still have not been able to raise enough money to do anything. So we need, we are looking for a grant writer because Kenya and Cameroon are waiting. And we still have, you know, 52 other countries to go after that. So we are looking for a grant writer. We need to get this borehole, solar power borehole song. We sung one in 2021, and we've not been able to raise enough money to do anything. So we really need a grant writer. So if anybody is a grant writer, we're not talking about people who claim to be grant writers. We're talking about people who know how to write grants and who have results. We really need to get some grants to get these boreholes going. So if anybody knows, let us know. If you know you would like to donate, go to our uh, uh, web webpage, uh, africaonlinetv.org, and make your tax deductible donations. Uh, next next month is um, uh, October. There are five Sundays, so we're going to be discussing STEW. STEW is an acronym that I came up with years ago, um, 2016. It stands for, for social media, transportation and telecommunication, energy and um, electricity and water. So uh, that's what we're going to be discussing next month because there are five Sundays. And of course, we're going to have a health topic. And today we are talking about suicide causes, uh, uh, symptoms, prevention, and treatment. But doc Dr. Sanders, I think we should be talking about how to treat suicidal thoughts because there's no treatment for suicide. If somebody's already committed suicide, there's nothing to treat, right? They just get, get it buried, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So the treatment uh, is for suicidal thoughts or ideation, yes. not the suicide itself. Not for suicide, so because suicide is you're already a dead person, rest in peace. Yeah, well, there, some people may not even say rest in peace. They may actually curse you. I know in my in my tribe, they don't bury you in, in my village if you commit suicide. Uh, Dr. Yes. Santos, is that the same case in your tribe? Uh, yes, they don't bury you with anything. And on that, and that same spot, they have to bore a hole. And from there, they're cutting you. If you died by hanging, they're going to cut from that tree and you fall into a hole and they cover it. And mm -hmm. even in, in some traditions, that compound becomes desecrated, desecrated. Mm -hmm. And they have to do some sacrifices to cleanse, some cleansing, uh, wow. traditional cleansing, before anybody can live there again. Um, you know, suicide was not very common when we were growing up. I, I only heard of one case. And, and when, when you commit suicide, your whole family is tarnished. People don't even want to get married in that family. Yes. So it's really a selfish thing to do, to commit suicide. Uh, and at least in your tribe, they bury you in that same hall. Ours, they don't even bury you in the village. I don't mm -hmm. care where you commit it, but you cannot be buried on that soil. They take you outside the, the village and bury you on the outskirts. I know there are other uh, uh, different traditions that have different things. I don't know, uh, Dr. Crosslin, I, I want to hear from you. How are suicide victims buried? Are they buried just like everybody else in your experience? Yes, as far as I know, um, they, the people that I know that uh, committed suicide, even that were um, like my boss's son, lady i was telling you guys just bullied me she was so mean to me to the mm -hmm. point to where i had to seek treatment um she was just that mean and her son you know he killed himself and all the people at work you know because i obviously wasn't able to work there anymore because of the way she treated me um it was so embarrassing. Um, so when I sought treatment, I had the best um, psychiatrist ever. And um, he sent me for assessment, you know, testing. 
and uh, he sent me to the best and um, other psychoanalysts, and she is the same doctor that assesses the football, our professional football team. Mm -hmm. So, um, anyway, so my boss, his son, after I was no longer working there, like after a year later, he committed suicide and everyone at, that was still working there told me they thought I was going to be happy. And, mm -hmm. you know, because she was so mean, but I was very sad because mm -hmm. no one should feel so hopeless or helpless that they would end their lives. And he was buried the same as if he would have died of natural causes. Mm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, uh, you know, you see, when people are mean to you, it reflects on them. It shows who they are, not you. And who knows if she's the reason why her son committed suicide, you know, but I am glad, you know, you sought treatment and you left that area because nobody, nobody should ever make anyone feel worthless. But there are people out there who make people feel that way because they themselves are not happy with themselves. Exactly. Dr. Santos, did you hear me, sir? That I'm still suffering from it though, from her bullying every minute. Almost every minute, I'm, I, I, I think about it. Thank you. I heard you. I heard you very well. I will get in touch with you after this, uh, Dr. Gloria Grosslin. I know now you are suffering from uh, the post-traumatic effects mm -hmm. of all what has gone happened. Uh, it's a pity. Uh, Dr. Santos, can you inbox her your number? On the chat room, send yes, it to her directly. I'll, I'll send her my number straight away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Th thank you. Um, uh, Dr. Uh, Sister Ruth, do you want to tell us how the people that you know in your community or network that have committed suicide, if they were treated, their funerals were treated the same way, like people die of natural causes? Uh, there's only one that I know of. No, actually two. I'm just going because it's been a little bit of time since these people have committed suicide, but both of them were given a, a proper funeral and oh. people there grieving and all of that. One of them, unfortunately, was a 14-year-old girl. Hmm. And um, there was no indication whatsoever. She was happy. She was playing sports. She was involved in the community. Um, no warning signs. No one saw it. it. They didn't see, there wasn't any, I feel sad today or any, you know, I want to hurt myself type thing going on. And back at that time, it was 2010, because that's the same year my mother died. There was this crazy game going around with the kids where you mm -hmm. pretended you were hanging yourself. What? Then you would um, you, were you were you familiar with that at all, Doctor Santo? No. It, it was some kind of some kind of game kids were playing, and what they think may have happened was she decided to play the game. Oh Jesus! I, oh Lord! Because she went downstairs. They're going to go to her to a game to a to a, no. to a to a sports game, and her mother found her. Oh. And I don't know where children come up with. These type that, of things. That's from the devil. The devil that, puts yeah. it in their minds through social media, through their friends. This is horrible. It's horrible. horrible. And then another one, it wasn't really suicide. These kids, I don't know where they got a gun from, but they decided to play Russian roulette. Oh, God. And there's your friend blowing his brains out right in front of you. Oh, my goodness. Playing it's with a gun. These were teenagers too. It wasn't little kids. It was teenagers, and this was many years ago. And this is right. why, of all the games you could play as a child or as a teenager. I mean, we went outside and played, and we, we, there was no playing like that. And like you said, that is from that's 
Absolutely. Yeah, it, that, because the devil operates in the mind realm. It doesn't operate in the soul, in, in the heart. It's the mind, and the, you know, the, the our minds get bombarded with what seventy thousand thoughts per day, and ninety percent of those are negative. That's why our children are really growing up in a very tough time. When we were growing up, we did not know much about you know bully or even kids. This idea of suicide did not even cross anybody's mind. Social media, pedophile. We didn't hear all that, but these children are dealing with all this, not just from their environment, but from the global environment, because everybody is interconnected. You know, so Dr. Santos, please. Take a minute and advise parents on what they can do. You know, like what Sister Ruth is saying. Thank, thankfully, I don't know anybody who's ever committed suicide. I know when we grew up, we had of one, not even when we we're growing up, I, I, it was like adult age where I, somebody told me somebody, somebody was trying to marry somebody and they said they cannot marry them because their father committed suicide. That's how I even heard about it. But I've never known anybody who committed suicide. Thank God. And I, I don't intend to ever know anybody who takes, nobody has a right to take their own lives. Even you, you take your life, you are going straight to hell. You cannot enter heaven because that's murder. Even though you murdered yourself, it's still murder, you know? And that's one of the 10 commandments. So you don't, you, you did not bring yourself into this world and you cannot take yourself out. You didn't bring anybody into this world, you cannot take yourself out. You don't have the power or the authority to take any life, whether it's your life, your child's life or somebody else's life. But Dr. Santos, I will say we have about 40 minutes. Please take, take a minute and just, you know, give parents some advice, you know, some things to look for, some things to be alert. I know a lot of parents are either distracted with social media or be busy with work. They don't know what's happening with their own children in their houses. Please. Reverend Palm, um, it makes me way, way sad when I hear uh, some things that are happening in our society. Um, we studied that most of the things that happen with us are behaviors we picked up in our society. Mm -hmm. In essence, there was even a question that we used to, used to give to us as beginning students of psychology, that is it the environment that influences behavior or the behavior that influences environment. Uh, or definitely, they both, both work hand in hand together, but uh, statistics have shown that most of the behaviors that do manifest themselves today, like suicide, drug use, prostitution, um, um, other things which are abnormal, um homicide and other things are things that are practically copied copied especially as you indicated about the global the global space which is social media whereby you have a lot of groups a lot of groups we when when, when i was lecturing last time about um the misuse of social media or the consequences of social media. I talked about cyber bullying, cyber triads, cyber uh, spams and all those things, crowd, whereby they build up a crowd with a negative idea to sabotage people, mm -hmm. to bully people. Some children are now suffering from suicidal thoughts, not because of the actual face-to-face -face bullying in school, but because of the bullying at home, taking place in their bedrooms with their cell phones and iPads. Mm -hmm. They have chat groups. Last week, I was in, in Sunset Elementary School in Morgantown, where I had to go to school because a fight has broke out in the cafeteria. My daughter was involved. Mm. And the genesis of the fight was as a consequence of my daughter having called her friend and there was a third party in the call and the other party did not know about the third party. Mm. So they said bad things that affected the silent listener and that led to the, the escalation at the cafeteria 
to the extent that the officer, the campus officer had to step in or else it would have resulted in a very big fight. So I and the principal of the, of the school spoke about the importation of home disputes in, on campus. Mm -hmm. So fight, even there are groups whereby these children, they, they, they plan a fight mm. the next day in school. Mm. And when I asked the principal, what can we do? The principal said, they can actually resolve matters that happen on campus. But matters that originate out of campus and with the use of cell phones are matters that can be resolved only by law and order. Yes. Because what the best they can do is to protect that there is no physical confrontation on campus, but they are not responsible if it happens elsewhere. And so I was in a, in a, in a, situation, in a situation whereby I did not know whether the other option for me was to take it to law and order or to, or to, or to, or to talk to the parents because I did not even end up having a parent-teacher meeting because the principal promised me he was going to handle the matter. But I sent a warning to that family that if anybody touches my child, I'm going to retaliate because uh, let them tell the family so that the family should also educate their child so that he should not do anything to my child. So they now know that my child got somebody to defend. That's right. That somebody got her back. Her also. So uh, that's how the matter has ended because they heard my warning as well that I'm protecting also my child. Mm -hmm. And um, so um, I'm just telling parents that nowadays our oh. teenagers, our teenagers, are the most difficult to deal with teenagers. We call them in psychology or in therapy, working with difficult teens. Mm -hmm. Difficult teens, because they are manipulative. That's, they are into the, into the area of self-discovery. They are mm -hmm. identifying their sex. Their sexes are manifesting, male and female. They're trying to experiment. They're at the experimental age of their life. Mm -hmm. So the least group where they belong when negative things are taught, they stand a high probability of following the direction for a try and error. And a try, not everybody gets into a try and error and comes out. All of us have tried. We have navigated those waters. We've been teens. We knew, we know that some of us went for try and error. Not all of us came out. Some people are not successful in life today, academically, professionally, because they went to, into those areas and they were stuck. It's, it takes good parenting skills, good counseling skills, good community skill, good uh, Christian skills to raise a child. Because let me tell you, now parents are doing what they call phone tracking. Yes. There's, an app, there's an app you download in your children's phone. Mm. That you can be able to see all what your child does on, the phone, on his phone, on her phone. This is what phone. Yeah, that's true. My sister in law has that. So, this is a technique that I, as I am, I, that's why I tell you that when I, when, I like, when I give lectures on topics these days, I try to also talk from my own experience as a parent who has yeah. four teenagers. I have four teenagers. I have 21, I have 18, I have 17, and I have 14. So, I'm dealing with four teens here of different behaviors, mm -hmm. different interactions. It's mm -hmm. a difficult moment in any parent's life dealing with teens, mm -hmm. who would call them troubled teens. Majority of the escalations and problems occurring in this country is between those H, H, H brackets. Mm -hmm. Yes. So parents can start to do phone tracking. They can start to follow up activities in school. They can talk with school counselors. They can reach out to the teachers. Some parents don't even look at their children's report cards, school mm -hmm. records, to see how they, what is happening with their grades. Mm -hmm. At least COVID, the one call it COVID, COVID nineteen, came with it was was a misgiving, but it but they had some people, benefits. They had, had some, some benefits. Yes, we became teachers. We became homeschoolers. We spent time with family. Family was stuck with each other. Yes. 
Even marriages that were at a bay, people learned how to stay with their spouses at home. That's right. Yes. So there are some merits of that tragedy. So one of them was we learned how to teach our children. We learned how to look at their grades. We became teachers. So if we became teachers during COVID, we can still become now home counselors. Mm -hmm. We can become home therapists. Mm -hmm. But there's a question my friend asked me, how can a parent teach a child good character and good habit when the parent themselves are worse than the child? Oh, yeah, yeah they, then they, they will not be able to. That maybe they are, will just hopefully that they, they, are, they are affiliated with some church or some ministry or some community organization that can teach because you cannot give what you don't have. That's the truth. But yes. I want to add something real quick. We're about to take the last round. On that phone tracking also, there are some apps that you can hear anything that's happening around your child. So if somebody's bullying your child, you would hear. Because sometimes if you're just talking to your child on the phone, the child may, may be intimidated, may not want to tell you they've been bullied. But with that, with that app, I don't know the name because I don't have a little kid. But you, a parent should use technologies to track, track their, their children. And it's not invasion of privacy. It's, it's called safety and survival in this, in this world that we live in. So I, I want to go to Dr. Crossling to give us her last word. Dr. Santos, you have more time to, to give your final remarks. Sure. Um, so thank you so much for this platform to, um, to share and to think about what I've been thinking about for a very long time. Um, that's why I love this program and this platform because it's a safe space yeah. and and I've I learn something every time I join and I just think this platform sometimes is just made just for me. So thank you so much. You're welcome and, and please, you know, let let others know about it so they can benefit. They can also watch them on Facebook or also come on. So Sister Ruth, I'm gonna to go to you for your last word. Thank you, thank you everyone. This was a very good show. I would just say, become more aware and, and be a better listener. There, there's usually, there's clues that people leave that they are hurting, that they're depressed, that there's something going on, that they're hopeless. Just my last word is be a better listener. Yeah, thank you. Uh, before we go to Dr. Santos and give his last word, parents really, you, you bring these children into this world, you are responsible for them. Social media is not responsible for them. The church is not responsible for them. Their grandparents are not responsible for them. The school is not responsible for them. You are responsible. You made them. You brought them. Without you, they will not be in the situation that they are in. So invest the time in, in the children. Don't go and be walking a triple and double shift to make money because you think you want to give them expensive phones and material things. That's not what they need. They need you to train them. Proverbs 22, uh, 6 says, train up a child the way they should go. When they grow up, they will not depart from it. So invest the time. It, it, uh, uh, Dr. Santo, your final word. My Reverend Pam and fellow viewers, uh, as well as co-panelists, I am so glad to be in African Online again to talk about suicide. Uh, this September month has been a month of many blessings to me. And I would like to share the blessings with all of you, uh, which are one, I just have my new wife. Congratulations. We are, we are happily married. Awesome. As surprise, though the other festive part of the marriage will be coming up before the end of the year. Africa Online will be invited as guests of honor. Awesome, awesome. So, and uh, we reserve the other good news for the future edition of the program. Oh, the wow. Program. He's going to put us in suspense. <laughs> well, Dr. San Dr. Santos, we have been with you. You have been with us even before you got your, P your doctorate degree. So um, we are family, we celebrate you. We, we know 
we have shared your pain and we're going to share your your your, your joy uh, romans 12 15 a says rejoice with them that do rejoice so we rejoice with you and we will definitely be there to celebrate you congratulations to our wife tell her she's an african online wife she she's she's our wife she doesn't belong just to you she yes. belongs to you and africa online family congratulations my brother and thank you so much for your faithfulness and for always sharing your knowledge and uh, and thank you i know you're going to stay in touch with dr crosslin uh, to all our viewers thank you so much on behalf of africa online media corporation and near song we send our heartfelt condolences to you um praying for you and your family dr uh, ambassador lisa you were missed but we'll see you guys next sunday on that note we draw the curtains like near so we'll say see you next sunday as we just as we discuss social media dr santos you need to be here social media is the s in stew we're going to talk there. about social media next sunday uh, and sister ruth i know you will have the right backdrop so dr crosslin <laughs> invite someone and uh this this show was actually being streamed i've been on the road since july this is the first show that i've been able to stream the others will be uploaded on youtube you guys have a wonderful wonderful week and um I'll see you next month in october be well and be safe